Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk on another important topic and the topic of today's discussion is global climate change. And for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios, Dr. Sujit Thakur. Dr. Sujit Thakur is Assistant Professor in Department of Political Science, the Singh College, University of Delhi. Dr. Thakur has immense experience and through the life platform of CEC he believes that the student community as a whole to be benefited through his knowledge. Friends, if you wish to ask questions from Dr. Sujit Thakur on today's topic that is global climate change, then do call us through our toll free number. Our toll free number is 1800110430. I repeat, our number is 1800110430. All dear friends who are watching us right now are requested to call in the last 10 minutes of the lecture. So that first you could have deep insight into today's session and uh, yes of course in last 10 minutes we will try to give answers to your questions through Dr. Sajid Thakur. Now I would like to welcome our guest Dr. Thakur once again. Hello sir. Welcome to uh, thank you Gitika. <coughs> uh, global climate change is one of the most important issues environmentalists have been raging from the last 30 to 40 years. And from last two topics we have been discussing about the environmental issues from theoretical propositions to the global response. Today we are going to discuss about the another important issues which have become very important from the 80s, 1980s when uh, in the 1980s when uh, intergovernmental panel started uh, talking about you see the rising temperatures of the globe would create a bigger problem for the human civilization. Keeping this thing in the mind. Today's topic is going to discuss about overall perspective of rising temperatures of the globe, changing patterns of the weather, then rising sea level, loss of biodiversity, how these all the problems would affect the general human on the earth. See, <coughs> as a student of the global politics, we, ha we will have to also discuss about how the different countries of the global community thinking about this issue and how the global communities have been negotiating, re renegotiating and taking different stand on the issue of the changing global climate. Equally, we will also discuss about the scientific predictions and the questions raised by the different state on the on this predictions like for the example when the 1980s when the intergovernmental panel for the climatic change talked about you see the changing global pat, changing uh, global patterns of the temperatures would become a very dangerous for the human civilizations so the way we are urbanizing ourselves the way we are industrializing ourselves, the way we are emitting the carbon dioxide and the way we are hampering the carbon cycles, it would create a bigger problem for the earth than the country like the USA who are the one of the most dominating country of the world and taking all every time a very uh, important, playing a very important role in deciding you know, what kind of decisions global community would take they started questioning it and in the 1997 when the Kyoto Protocol was signed by the number of countries, even the US President also signed and ratified it, the Senate did not uh, given, uh, did not give the approval and later in 2001, the George W. Bush second told the media that we are not going to ratify the Kyoto Protocol and then when in the 2012 when there was a Rio 20 summit was held in the Rio de Janeiro, again the US raised the issues. You see, as long as the global community would not resolve this problem of rising temperature or rising sea level, the society, as long as the largest country of the world like the China and India would not become a partner of this treaty. So, what we have been witnessing for the last 30 and 40 years, time to time, at the global level, well for the initiatives have been taken by the global community or by the United Nations Environmental Program or by the United Nations General Assembly. What we witnessed that 
every time one country or another country raise the issues of their own concern. For the example, in the recent past, what we witnessed that, where the every global community are concerned about the rising temperatures of the globe from the last 30 to 40 years or from the last 60 years, Russia on the another side took a different kind of a stand. They said, you see, if the temperature would rise of the globe, it would help more to their countries. It would give more time for their agriculture uh, uh, cultivations. At the same time, it would uh, also uh, uh, it, it, it would also extend its agriculture land. So, there are different kind of understanding what we have been seeing in the last 30 to 40 years. On the same time, when the issue of China participations in the uh, stopping of the carbon emissions, China started telling to the world community, see this is our time to catch up with the world community. This is our time to catch up with the world economy. So, why we would stop when this is a time for us to uh, become a developed country in the world map. So, these are the issues which have been generally uh, uh, creating some kind of concerns among the global community to how we can resolve the problem of the climate change across the world. And you see, now the scientific community, whether those who are supporting and those who are not supporting, those who are talking about, you see, it would be a natural phenomena. Everyone is agreed that yes, the temperature of the globe is the rising and if the temperature of the globe would rise, it would create a lot of problem for the human civilizations whether it, it will be the melting of the ice cap or the, uh, whether it will be the loss of the biodiversity, whether it will be a threat to the uh, health of the aging populations or it would be a some kind of uh, inundated <coughs> place for the number of countries, especially the EOSIS countries. So, these concerns generally global communities are raising these times. So, in the first slides, what we are discussing about it, you see, how we will start uh, understanding about the climate change. Here the first uh, uh, slide talking about the climate, ch climate change refers to alterations in the earth's climate system that may occur due to increased concentration of green greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The change in the climate are caused primarily by the emissions of fossil fuel like carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, sulfur hexafluoride and other gases. The combined emission of these gases disrupts the earth's natural carbon cycle. Now, what we understood through this slide, let us see, they are telling the climate change referred to alterations of the earth climate systems and how the alteration of the earth climate uh, systems has been happening in the last 60 years or from last 100 years. Here they are talking about, you see, there are certain gases that is no, known as the green, greenhouse gases, their em, uh, emissions created a problem uh, in the global atmosphere. And they are telling, you see, this is the human centric activities that has been creating a bigger problem for the rising temperature of the glo globe or the climatic change in the global uh, system or in the atmosphere. So, they are talking about, you see, if we have to understand about what is the climate change, then we have to understand about alterations in the earth climate and then they said okay, the emissions of the carbon dioxide like, uh, uh, like carbon emissions from uh, of the greenhouse gases and related to the other gases. And they said, you okay, see how we will have to curve it. There they say, you okay, see when there is a lot of emissions of the carbon uh, dioxide and these gases, it would some kind, somewhere alter the global climate uh, system. Why it alter the global climate, climate systems? Because there is a uh, disruption in the natural carbon cycles. So, it, it is some kind of scientific understanding where they are talking about, you see there are three, three things one, one has to understand, ki why the global climate, climate change has been occurring in the uh, world system. They are taking a lot of lot, lot and lot emissions of the carbon dioxide, nitro, nit nit nitro oxide and other gases. Uh, that known as a greenhouse gases, their emissions create lot of problem and their emissions somewhere uh, create a, uh, 
problem in the stratosphere area that is above the 12 kilometer of the earth and there we are finding the uh, uh, sun uh, directly uh, affecting the uh, whole the earth system and they are talking about kisi uh, another region they are talking about kisi th there is a somewhere hindrance in the natural carbon cycle and due to this the uh, atmosphere of the uh, globe has been changing and if we will have to preserve and if we will have to maintain the ecological balance then we have to think about to how to maintain and how to reduce these gases. This is the basic concerns global community also thinking about it, ki how we will have to reduce the emissions of the carbon dioxide, how we will have to reduce the usage of the uh, fossil fuels and how we will have to uh, 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 reverse back the situations of the global climatic change where the natural carbon cycle process would take uh, uh, in a, a place as it naturally taking place in the earlier. So, these are the issues which are uh, very much concerning to the uh, global community. Then what we uh, witness that in the next slide, a first step towards a worldwide climate change regime modeled on the Vienna Convention's Montreal Protocol regime was taken at the United Nations Conference for Economic Development in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. All the participant 176 nations signed the UN Framework Conventions on the Climate Change. A binding treaty that recognized the problem and called the precautionary measures to anticipate, prevent or minimize the causes of climate change and mitigations of its adverse effect. Now, see what we witnessed that the global communities are more concerned about to how to reverse this uh, 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 greenhouse gases effect and uh, make a globe where the natural cycle, uh, natural cycle of the carbon would take place. And here, from the 1980s, what we witnessed that the first time in the Vienna Conference conventions, the global community started thinking seriously about how to uh, reverse this cycle of uh, uh, natural carbon process. And then uh, the Montreal Protocol, what we see in the 1987, where the global community started thinking more seriously. Then what we witnessed that in the 1988 inter intergovernmental uh, panel for the climatic change has been established. So, since that what we have uh, witnessed that the number of conferences held across the world committee and we started discussing, deliberating, debating about how we can minimize the cause of climate change and mitigations of its adverse effect. And since that we are uh, started discussing about all these issues and in 1992 when the Rio de Janeiro, uh, in the Rio de Janeiro almost 176 countries sign on this agreement ki how we can reverse this trend and since that what we have been witnessing the United Nations framework of Convention for the climate change has been signed and each and every year almost a, a member countries set uh, uh, together and they decide ki how we can control and contain this carbon emissions and last treaty uh, uh, in the 2018 was held in the Poland. So, uh, uh, before that uh, what we witnessed that the treaty was held in the Morocco, then before that the treaty was held in the France where the Prime Minister Nandan Modi was also participated in it. So, what we are witnessing from all these facts that we see from 1980 onwards a global committee have been shown more and more concerns about the changing climate, uh, cli uh, climate of the earth and how we can reverse it the trends. So, the global community of the human civilizations would make a natural uh, 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 balance with the ecology and that is the basic concerns of the uh, global community and the global politics. Then uh, in this slide what we try to understand the historical overview of the this climate change and uh, of uh, climate uh, change, uh, change politics. Here uh, what we witnessed that in the first point the global warming emerged as a significant global political issue in 1988. In September 1988, the issue first reached the UN General Assembly with Malta proposing that climate become part of the common heritage of mankind. By December of that year, the General Assembly had passed a resolution endorsing the establishment of the IPCC and urging that the issue become a priority one but withdrawing from the common heritage concept towards an assertion that climate change was merely a common concern of the humanity. See, through these two points, what we understand, you see, the Malta uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, conventions already. Uh, uh, this is the, the, there is second time where, uh, uh, of the World Climatic Conventions were held held in the 
Malta, and there, the, the uh, all the small Iceland countries who 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 are going to face a major threat of the changing climatic uh, patterns of the globe, and they started uh, emphasizing on on the UNEGA, especially the UN General Assembly, that see the global community must consider this changing pattern of the global climate, the changing pattern of the temperature of the globe would be a common heritage uh, 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 of the things because see if this trend would continue if the uh, uh, sea would be rise more and more if the temperature would rise and more if the ice cap would started melting it would not affect one and two countries it would affect more than 50 and 100 countries of the world so if we have to preserve this earth we will have to think like that how to preserve this human civilization and so they said to preserving this earth is basically a common heritage uh, com common heritage uh, uh, things so they requested that because it's a very important for all of us to think in the larger perspective and declare this uh, climatic patterns as a common heritage rather than uh, in other uh, aspect like another environmental security issues but the uh, United Nations General Assembly accepted the proposal of the uh, Malta and they said, see, we are very much agreed with that, that this is the very serious problems and we are equally concerned about it. But our concern is more uh, keeping uh, this thing in the mind, see, uh, rather uh, declaring it as a common heritage, we consider it, it is a common problem of the humanity. So, uh, in the United Nations General Assembly, they declared this changing patterns of the climate or the rising temperature of the globe. They said it, see, it's uh, the common concern of the humanity and how we can reduce the emissions of the uh, greenhouse gases that would be the major concerns for the global community. And we all would work to, uh, to uh, prevent uh, 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 this kind of emissions of the gases and we will create awareness among the society, we will create em uh, awareness among the state, we will create awareness at the global level and global platform where we can pursue uh, at the same time will also uh, make a guide uh, give the guideline to the global community to how to preserve our uh, earth from this uh, 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 unbalanced emissions of the gases. So, uh, uh, from 1988 what we, we have witnessed that a global community started thinking more seriously about uh, uh, this uh, rising temperature and there what we witness a demand uh, was for the common heritage but uh, the united nations general assembly accepted as as a common concerns of the humanity then uh, uh, in the next uh, slide what we are witnessing the george bush uh, the president of the usa at that time made global uh, warming issue in the us presidential election of 1988 those who think we are powerless to do anything about the greenhouse effect are forgetting about the white house effect was his famous line on this issue. Then the many world leaders made a statement on the need for a response to global warming. This continued through late 1980s and provided a great deal of the pressures and, uh, pressure and momentum which led to the formal negotiation which started in 1991. Now, it is the political part of the uh, 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 global climatic change and here what we understood that the US, uh, one of the dominating power of the world politics when there was a US presidential election was held in the 1988, the senior George Bush started uh, um, making this kind of assertion because see the, the, the Humber conference was held in the 1988, then the World Meteorological Dep uh, Department and the United Nations Economic Development Pro Pro Program jointly set up uh, 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 <coughs> Uh, intergovernmental panel for climatic change things and uh, then we, what we witnessed from the 70s uh, MIT research reports and uh, eco radicals they all have uh, started raising this kind of alarming statement then uh, the scientists uh, NASA scientists also started claiming that you see we have to stop waffling uh, uh, lot and take a certain kind of decisive decisions. So, it was a one of the common concern in the uh, US general elections also. Uh, and that time, the uh, one of the most prominent candidate who later became a president of the U.S. also, this he said openly to the world community, you see, you should not bother about the greenhouse effect. You don't know the power uh, and the technological might of the 
uh, USA because if you have seen the power of the greenhouse uh, effect, but you have not seen the power of the white house effect. So, the, the, when he made this kind of a statement, he tried to say us, you see do not bother about these things, we know okay, this is the concern, this is the concerns for the global community, everyone knowing that, we also know the USA is one of the largest producers of the uh, uh, greenhouse gases, then USA is also one of the largest uh, 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 emitter of the uh, greenhouse gases. We are also going to contain it, but at the same time we want to tell to the world community, you should not bother about it. We have a, this kind of technological might, we have a, this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, scientific knowledge where we can easily contain this global problem. So, the US president said ki the, the day uh, he will uh, come to the office in the, next, the first year he will call a conference and then he will call the conference of the all the global community and how we can contain this greenhouse uh, uh, gases that would be the major concerns for the global community. So, what we witnessed that after that after 1988 what we witnessed that when the uh, George Bush became a president a series of global conference held in the Toronto and then the Mont Montreal protocol then finally in the 1991 when the uh, United Nations started calling the Earth First Summit and in 1992 what we witnessed that more than 176 countries uh, signed on this uh, treaty to how to we will preserve the uh, uh, climate of the world and how we will save our biodiversity and then they, are, they also agreed on to set up a United Nations framework of uh, framework convention for the climate change. So, a series of uh, conferences held at the international uh, international level and the at the uh, uh, and also when the us started making this kind of a statement especially the us president started making this kind of uh, statement then it also is uh, uh, shown the shift for uh, that the environment politics became a, uh, a a global concern and it came to the high politics because earlier prior to the 1980s what we have witnessed it was a secondary issues for the global community and the national security and other issues was more prominent but after 80s what we witnessed that it in environmental concern environmental security became a, uh, a high politics area of the global community and the global community started thinking about it then the Hamburg to Mali, because why the Hamburg to Mali? Here, what we uh, try to learn it in November 1988, a World Congress on Climate and Development was held in Hamburg. This called for a carbon dioxide emission to be reduced by 30 percent by the year 2000 and 50 percent by 2015. It argued for unilateral actions from the industrialized nations to start the process of change, a global ban on the productions and the use of CFC covered by the Montreal Protocol by 1995 and urgent strategies for reversing deforestations and beginning afforestation program. Now, see what I have said you in the 1998 a world climatic conference was held in the Hamburg and here the global community and the re re representatives of the globe they said uh, see we should not think about what the other nations uh, uh, are doing or what the uh, thinking of the developing uh, nation. Now, uh, instead of those countries who are uh, emitting a lot of uh, uh, greenhouse gases, they should take an initiative like if you uh, take the data, then 40 percent emitted by the uh, uh, USA, then 40 percent by the European countries, rest of the uh, emissions by the Japan and the other developed countries. Those, so, in this uh, World Climatic Conference, the global community asked uh, to this uh, industrialized countries to see you should take an initiative, you should take a lead and try to uh, contain the usage of the greenhouse uh, gases and here the trans social movement also played a very important role when the, in the USA when the dew point uh, uh, where the 25 percent production of the green, uh, greenhouse gases uh, uh, was made by this dew point plant here the uh, the trans social movement activists, the Greenpeace went there and they demonstrated against it and they raised the banners uh, of the revolt and they started creating awareness among the society and you see how it would uh, damage the earth, how it would damage the uh, climate and there uh, it, it draw the attentions of the world community. So, through the Humber conference what we witnessed that you see a, a, a unilateral decisions, uh, a unilateral uh, initiatives being uh, taken by the industrialized countries to how to contain it and there also we witnessed that that different kind of politics we saw it because see when uh, the US and the uh, Scandinavian countries started thinking about to how to 
reduce the uh, greenhouse gas effects then the european countries started giving alternatives and they said ki no 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 there is no need to uh, use the cap then when the us and the switzerland started pursuing uh, the european countries then the germany was in the side of the usa but the great britain france and uh, italy was not in favoring of reducing the greenhouse uh, uh, gases because they they, they considered ki see it would hurt the their economy however Uh, later on they started uh, giving alternative kind of thing the cap and trade policy uh, and they started talking about you see uh, we should uh, t- give the uh, permissions to the concerned countries ki how much they can emit the uh, 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 carbon carbon dioxide and if they would uh, go above the uh, absorption uh, capacity of the atmosphere then the they would have to pay uh, for for it so these kind of alternatives started coming but anyhow the global community has started thinking about ki how to reduce the uh, uh, cfc and now after 2015 what we witnessed that the global community have been reached on certain kind of conclusions to reduce the greenhouse gas affected uh, greenhouse gases and by 2030 then in the uh, also in november 1989 representative from some of the small island state especially the kiribati the maldives malta mauritius and trinidad and tobago met in malaj in the maldives to discuss global warming from their perspective this produced the malaj declarations and later led to the establishment of the alliances of small island states oocs in the second world climate conference what we witnessed that you see this has to become so important prominent for the uh, 36 countries of the world those who are the coastal countries uh, uh, they call the uh, conference and they establish association that, that call the alliances of the small island states and they came together and they forced to the united nations assembly to urgently think about to how to preserve this Uh, global temperatures and how to contain this uh, global uh, temperature issues because if the sea level would rise then it would become very difficult for them to survive and the way the scientists are predicting they are started thinking about ki see if the global community would not cooperate then in 2050 uh, uh, the area of the almost 36 countries would be uh, uh, um, not a place where the, the human civilization would flourish so they started talking about you see it is a issue for the global community and we should all think together rather than to to think in the isolation then the rio 22 the paris agreement we will discuss after the break of this issues Yes, no, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us uh, this uh, session, friends. You are requested to be with us as there is a lot more for you in store. So we are back after a short break. Thank you. Hello friends welcome back to this session friends as you know that today we are talking on global climate change and for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios Dr Sujit Thakur Dr Sujit Thakur is a renowned professor and uh, through him we always get in depth knowledge on various topics friends if you wish to ask questions from Dr Sujit Thakur then do call us through our toll free number our number is 18001010430 i repeat our number is 18001010430 you are requested to call in the last 10 minutes now i would like to welcome our guest dr thakur once again hello sir welcome back to the session <coughs> Once again, uh, uh, prior to the break, w- what we have been discussing about, you see, from the Hamburg to the um, Malta to the Toronto to the Rio de Janeiro to the Mont- Montreal to the Kyoto Protocol, and these all the uh, uh, treaty uh, uh, the initiated by the United Nations Environmental Programme. Uh, what we uh, what we have witnessed that there are certain kind of problems between the uh, global community 
to uh, come together and certain times within the European partners, then the within the industri industrial country, then between the develop and developing countries. But after 2012, what we witnessed that uh, this issue once we, uh, became a very prominent before the global committee and from 2012 to 2015 the two treaties especially the rio 20 and the Paris agreement where uh, the global committee uh, somewhere uh, reached on the consensus consensus to how to reduce the carbon emissions from by the 2030 and there they all agreed whether it's a china whether it's india whether it's america whether it's a european countries and they all agreed that you see it's the common problems and we will have to protect the environment and it is very important for all of us. So, so what we see in the Rio 20s in 2012, given the widespread acknowledgement of the global warming and emphasis on increasing need or for climate, climate governance. So, two things what we see witness, one is the climate governance and one, another one is the global warming. Both the issues have got the prominence. Then what we see, the Rio 20 failed to achieve any political commitment to garner much support establishment of WPO. However, the two things what we understood, you see, though there is a, not a common consensus emerge on the commitment of the how to reduce it, but everyone started thinking about, you see, there is a time to establish a world uh, environment organization kind of thing. Then the US also want to see India and China uh, uh, limits its emissions. Then the Paris Climate Accord or Paris Climate Agreement is an agreement within the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change dealing with the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, mitigations, adoptions and finance setting in the year 2020. What we have witnessed that in the Rio 12, the US has a certain problem. It is it's, uh, asked for that the China and India would also become a partner of this uh, con con containment of the greenhouse gases. And most of the world community also thought about that there is a uh, need of the climate govern, gov governance kind of things. Then also they thought about like the WTO, there is a requirement of world environmental organizations. But anyhow, what we have witnessed that the both the uh, parties, whether it is developing and developed countries, there are some kind of uh, political uh, gap in, in understanding. But in 2015 in the Paris Accord, what we have seen it, by 2020, both the developing and developed countries agreed to reach on how to contain the greenhouse gases, especially their mitigation, adaptions, and finance. And so they also uh, 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 are talk, talking about the green fund, ki how and technological transfer and all these things. And they have reached on certain kind of uh, solutions of the these problems. So these uh, uh, initiatives have anyhow help uh, all of us to understand these problems and the global community uh, yet uh, still believing that the United Nations environmental program would able to sort out the problem through different kind of negotiations with their uh, conferences. Then in the scientific what we witnessed that you see in the 90, 2001 when the uh, uh, George Bush Jr. Uh, said okay, so no we are not going to sign on the Kyoto Protocol. He, he raised uh, the, the questionability on, of the science of the rising temperatures of the globe. And here, the two thirty cents is very important who we have, we have just uh, uh, contradicting each other's views. One is Hansen's and another is Dyson. The NASA scientist James Hansen's statement to the US Congress that it is time to stop waffling so much. When he said the NASA scientist James Hansen's, what he tried to say in the 80s, you see, when he started uh, speaking before the US Congress, he said, you see, this is the time to take initiatives. We, we have already taken a lot of uh, time where we are very much indecisive. So now if we cannot control and contain ourselves, if we cannot regulate uh, 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 this greenhouse gas effect, then it would, be, it would become a very dangerous for the world civilizations. And the number of other scientists are telling him the alarm is, but uh, uh, the Hansen's effect uh, would be a larger and what we witnessed that the Humber conference to the Malta, the Rio de Janeiro, the Kyoto Protocol, what would happen after when the NASA scientists started talking about, you see, this is the time to take a decision. Then uh, uh, the, uh, the deniers like the Freeman Dyson countered the argument of James Hansen in his book Weapon and Hope and called him alarmist. He said the first about global warming is, is exaggerated and it is more of politics than scientific based predictions. He suggested that in a natural cycle of 1 lakh years, the ice age prevails for 90,000 years followed by warm 
interglacial period of 10,000 years. The present period of warming began 12,000 years ago. Therefore, the onset of the next ice age may be overdue the harshest frost, frost in the 50 years in the Russia in March 2013. Now, see. The Doysons try to tell us, you see, the, what the Hansons trying to tell us, you see, if we cannot take a, uh, decisions and if you cannot uh, stop the emissions of the greenhouse uh, gases, then the Greenland, Antarctica, Arctic, they, it, uh, they, these, all the ice caps would melt and the more than 36 countries would wiped out from the world map and uh, there would be a threat to the food security, there would be a threat to the uh, 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 safe drinking water, there would be a threat to the uh, proper habitat for the human civilizations. He said ki it is completely unscientific and he himself to told him ki maybe our view uh, is unorthodox, un unorthodoxical, but he said it, ki see, uh, this age is take uh, 1 lakh years and here the 90,000 years, uh, it would be, uh, be like a I see it. And in the uh, 10,000 years, they would try to melt and again they try to rebuild itself. Though, so, they said ki whatever we have been witnessing in the last uh, 200 and 300 and 400 years and from last 100 years, it is a process, it is a natural process. It is a, it, a warming began in 2000 years ago. So, they try to tell us, ki, see this ice age would again uh, form and whatever we have been witnessing, it would again uh, through their natural process, it would be again uh, uh, come to the same patterns. So, one should not uh, become a panic and one should think like that. You see, this is the natural cycle and uh, uh, the, the scientists who are talking about you see the Arctic, Antarctica and the Greenland all would melt if the global temperature would rise uh, to 2 degrees Celsius uh, uh, up, uh, uh, by 2100 and the whole the global community would face a bigger problem. That is not the reality and he cited the example of the uh, two example. He said you see uh, uh, in the 2013 in the Russia, the last 50 years what we have seen it the uh, uh, harshest co coldest climate uh, we witnessed. Then uh, there was a Gulf stream uh, in the 2005 onwards uh, in the European uh, nations where there was a lot of cold wind. So, he said you see. Uh, this changing patterns indicate that you see now uh, this ice age uh, would take a natural place in their uh, own uh, uh, geological cycle. So, one should not bother about it. So, uh, even within the scientific committee, what we uh, witnessed that one is talking about you see this is the time to take a decision, another is talking about you know this is the natural process, one should not be alarmist. And taking this clue, Time to time, the global community and the global states also taking a different positions. Like in 2001, the George Bush said, you see, the uh, science is questionable. Then uh, now the Russia is talking about, you see, uh, it would help to the, our uh, our con uh, country and it, it would give the more uh, proper climatic weather for the more agriculture uh, productions and, and it would, if there would be a more warm weather, then it would give the more time for the uh, uh, cultivations and the crop productions. So, why we should bother about it and why we should contain the greenhouse effects. Then the China is talking about, you see, this is the time to catch up, our economy is growing. So, the industrialized country is talking about to stop the greenhouse emissions. So, but whatever the problem, right now we are facing these problems given by the in, in, uh, developed country. So, they should take initiative rather than we should take initiative. So, these, uh, these are the uh, statement when the global community started thinking, giving, then uh, this kind of scientific support, they, they started uh, uh, arguing in, in their own favor and raising the issues, uh, raising the statement of sometime uh, Hansons and sometime those who favors, uh, there should be no emissions, there should be no containment of the greenhouse gases, they started talking about the uh, <coughs> Dyson. So, these are the also problems scientifically what we witnessing uh, whenever the global community go to uh, uh, agreed on certain kind of issues. Then uh, the most important part is the impact of the climate change. And here what we are witnessing, there are number of impact uh, uh, being uh, already uh, um, given by the uh, IPCC and they said, you see, um, number one is the ocean and sea level rise, alterations of ocean circulations, patterns and loss of sea ice cover wide space change in coastal and maritime ecosystem. Third, they say the weather intensity a more vigorous hydrological cycle. 
means the first one what we have witnessing the ocean and sea level rise second one what we see the alteration of ocean circulations third one what we see the coastal maritime ecosystem problem then the third one what we see intensity a more vigorous hydrological cycle and next slide talking about the public health impact means the global health impact then the threat in agriculture and food security change in water resources and bi biological diversity losses so in the 1988 itself the intergovernmental panel for the climatic change said that these are the following issues where if we cannot control and contain our climate uh, patterns and the rising temperatures of the globe we would have to face all these problems and one by one we are going to discuss all these issues here uh, in this map what we are witnessing that you see these are the countries if the global temperatures would rise there is a uh, anticipations that uh, these countries would wipe out from the uh, world map like the cyprus bahamas cuba belize jamaica saint kitts antigua and barbuda Domin dominica republic trinidad and tobago Uh, then uh, the the south east asian pacific and other countries like singapore fiji malta tango papua new guinea bermuda and mo other more countries like almost 36 countries they are uh, so they have formed the alliances for the uh, small island countries and they started pressurizing and forcing the global community to think about uh, common heritage rather than think about it's only the concerns of the humanity and they said kisi if the present patterns of the consumption if the present pa patterns of the industrialization if the present patterns of the uh, uh, rising of the sea would continue then it would be very difficult for us to survive so it it's very important for all of us to think about how to preserve the, uh, the present earth so everyone would be flourish rather than uh, for the some uh, people it would be a fruitful and for the other it will be devastating then so this map what we try to understand the rise of the sea level how it would affect uh, to all of us see here the, uh, the scientists trying to tell us if the sea level rise 3 ft or 1 meter what would be the consequences they said you see the 10% of the production of the rice reduced then they said 80 85% of the world rice production take place in the south southeast and east asia endangering the food supply of 200 million people and create 50 million environmental refugees what they try to said us if you have gone through in the just uh, last week then uh, another scientific scientific report has come to say if this pattern of the global temperatures would continue because the south east asia is considered as the basket of the rice productions and here what we are witnessing they are telling to say the 80 uh, uh, they are producing the 80% 85% of the rice of the world consumption and if this present trend would continue then then productions would uh, decrease almost minimum 10% and this uh, last week the scientist report ha have come if this present global warming would continue then the whatever the uh, the nutrient value of this rice uh, for the human health that would also reduce and it would create a more and more problem for the human health then they are telling you see if it would if the rise uh, sea, uh, sea would be uh, above than 3 ft then uh, uh, right now there are 10 uh, 10 million climatic refugee but if it would continue then in 2025 it would increased increase to the 40 million and uh, after 2050 almost more than 200 million climatic refugee would be uh, across the world and it would it would create a very great threat for the uh, uh, state security and the society and the socio economic structures of the society so they are talking about you see it's it's not a, a issue which we can ignore uh, this is the issue it uh, is as important as the issue of state sovereignty and national security so if we cannot contain if we cannot reduce if you cannot reverse this changing patterns of the uh, uh, global uh, global climate change we would have to face a bigger problem in the future then they try to give uh, uh, through this slide what we try to understand what at, what kind of problem we are going to face it like the rise rise of sea level and the climate refugee the first point is the climate refugee are people displaced by environment change such as rising sea level drought and increase in hurricanes floods and other environmental disaster there are already tens of million of climate refugee around the world and by 2050 this number could increase to 150 to 200 millions one particularly vulnerable area is maldi four lakh populations approximately a nation of 1200 island 200 islands are inhabited in the indian ocean maldives highest point of elevation is a mere 2.3 meters 7.5 feet above sea level 
another is Cocoa Island, yeah, Cocoa Island. The U.S. state of Louisiana loses 65 square kilometer or 25 square kilo miles to rising sea level every year. Now, to this side, what we try to understand, you see, if the rising sea level would continue, what the scientists are trying to predict it, what would be the biggest problem for the world community? There is a rapid rise in the climatic refugee. One side there is a rapid rise in the population, and the other side there is a rapid rise of the climatic refugee. Then what we are witnessing, there is a lack of food across the state. Then third, what we are witnessing, the country like the Maldives, as example, in the Cocoa Island, in the Myanmar, it would be wiped out from the uh, global map and many more uh, countries. So, they are telling, you see, if we cannot reverse it back, we will have to think that, you see, after 2025, after just 7 to 8 years, you would have started facing this kind of problems. And they said, you see, they, they have given a present example of the Lusunia. And they said, you see, due, due to this rising temperatures, US is one of the most technologically advanced countries. And what the George Bush said in the 1988, you see, the world has not seen the effect of the White House. world has seen the effect of the Green House. But they are unable to contain and reduce the uh, 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 losing uh, uh, land uh, from uh, their own uh, territory and the Lucinia are losing uh, uh, 65 square kilometer each year and it is uh, displacing the people uh, of uh, that state. Then there is a, uh, there, 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 though there is a very small population called the Kibilana in the state of Alaska and there is a 200 indigenous peoples are residing in that state. But the World Bank has predicted that by 2025, this city would be not in the world map because it would be submerged in the uh, rise of the sea level. So, there are a number more, uh, more and more examples. Like the, uh, next they say, if the, all the ice on Greenland alone were to melt, global sea level would rise to 23 feet. Another 70 foot rise would be associated with the similar disintegrations in Antarctica. Could you imagine the way the Hansel is predict predicting, you see, if the present temperatures would be continued, then it would be very difficult for the global community to, uh, and for, for the coastal civilization to exist. And they are telling, you see, if only the three ice caps, what we see, the ice mountain like the Greenland, Antarctica and Arctica, if all three would melt, then the situation would be very devastating. But they are citing the example, if only the Greenland would start melting, then the sea level rise would be a more than 23 feet and number of more than 34 countries would be wiped out from the world map. So, they are telling us it is a very bigger problem and so the world community think about it. Then they say such rise would be global catastrophe leading to the end of life on many islands and in coastal civilizations throughout the world. As the whole of climate is warming by the indeterminate amount, however, certain geological areas such as Western Europe may experience colder temperatures because change in ocean current. What we have said it, there are pa changing patterns of the this. Then, the next slide, what we are witnessing, the US, the NASA, the Na National Atmospheric and Space Administrations, which tracks sea level rise all over the world, says that the sea has risen for the last 50 years at a rate of 0 0.7 of an inch each year. And the rise has accelerated to an annual rate of 0.12 percent of the past dozen years. A small islands and low level coastal areas are particularly vulnerable to climate change. Many low laying areas such as, such as parts of Maldives, Egypt and Bangladesh would be inundated and made uninhabited by a 50 centimeter 20 inch sea level rise. Now see, this is the very uh, 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 threatening or you can say the very concerning for all the human civilizations. You see the way the sea has been rising in the last 60 years, the way the scientist has proven that. You see from the last 60 years what we have witnessed that each and every year there is an increase of the 0 0.7 inch of the rise of the sea level. And they are telling us from the last 12 years it has been rising at the rate of 0 0.12 annually. And this was reported in the 1996 and now it is almost 20 years have been over. And they are telling you see if the present rise would, would be continue of the sea level, then you can easily understand the country like the Egypt which is one of the largest army and one of the strongest state of the Middle East would be 
a place where the civilization would not exist. This is the one of the oldest civilization of the world. Then uh, the Maldives, what I have talked about. Then the Bangladesh, one of the largest Muslim populations in the neighboring countries of India. And it is uh, you, you can imagine within the one meter of the contour, the six six million people would this uh, would be living. And if the sixteen crore people would migrate, where they would migrate? They would migrate into the India. They they would not have any other place to migrate. If the Maldives Maldives would submerge, where they would migrate? They would migrate to the India. So they are telling you see, it would be a bigger problem the, for the world community. It's not only the threat to the food security. It's not only only the threat to the biodiversity. It's not only threat to the human civilization. It would be a much larger threat for the world uh, peace and for the world civilization. So they are talking about you see, the environmental concern is one of the bigger challenge for the each and every country. Right now, the U.S. is losing its own territory. In the future, maybe the India would face the other refugee problems and what we witnessed in the 1971 when the more than one crore people would migrate from the Bangladesh just due to the uh, human-made disaster by the by Pakistan. So, the other issue is called the loss of biodiversity. Through global warming, sea level rise in salt water spills into the freshwater area. As a result, some areas experience desertification in conjunction with other human activities, altering natural ecosystem. According to the International Union of Conservation of Nature, nearly 2,000 species of plants and animals are considered at high risk of extinction. And they have given the two examples like the polar bears of the Arctic ice and the penguins in the Antarctica, then the robins in the melting birds and rodent in the America Pika. They, they try to tell us, you see, maintaining the ecological balance, it is very important for all of us to keep the every species of the earth uh, uh, survive and right now the way the human activities are going on most of the species are getting in, uh, extinct and they are telling you see the almost 20 percent are on the verge of ex extinctions and if they extinct then the ecological imbalance would take place and number of coral reefs and other islands area would have started submerging so they are telling us you see you should not only think about yourself because this a species uh, uh, is very important not only for the their own survival but survival of human uh, civilizations and they said you see what what kind of efficacy of the biodiversity what kind of importance they are giving you see they provide foods they provide us fresh waters they renew the raw materials and uh, for construction of the fuel regulate climate and air quality buffer against natural hazards like foods and storms, maintain soil fertility and pollinate crops. They are taking to say if there would be no ecological balance within the biodiversity system, then you would also would not get this kind of renewal capacity of the earth where they provide you food, they, they, they renew the fresh waters, they provide you the raw materials for the construction of the fuel, then regulate climate and air quality, then buffer against the natural hazards like foods and the storms and maintain soil fertility and pollinate crops. They are telling, so it is very important. Then the other important issue is the shortage of water. It is another major concern and the scientists are telling, the academic, academy are telling, you see, what we witnessed in the 19th century, there was a war uh, between the world, com world state on, on the name of the isle, but the 21st century would be witnessed that there will be a war on the name of the water. And it was not, uh, it was predicted by the vice president of the World Bank. And they, they said, ki, they see, already 40 percent of the world populations have water shortage. And with rapidly rising population, demand increase all the time. Smiley Siglandin, vice president of the World Bank in 1995 said, many of the wars of the century were about oil, but wars of the next century will be our water. The bank were reporting that 80 countries around the, around the world were experiencing water shortage which threaten their agricultural industry and health. Nine countries of the Middle East are already forced to import to water to survive. Now see, the four things what we witnessed that the 40% of the, of the world populations are already in the shortage of the water. Then the World Bank Vice President predicted that because the next century what we witness, the, the current century, that the war would be on the issue of the water and war is already going on on the number of countries, this food is already going on with the number of countries. Then the third they said, you see, the nine countries of the uh, Middle East are already importing the uh, water from the different countries. And 
80 countries in the 21st century are going to face this crisis of the water water problem. So, out of 210 countries, if the 80 countries would face the water problem, then you can easily understand what kind of problem we are going to face. And here, we are going to give some example like Djibouti, a teeny state at the mouth of the Red Sea has the lowest reserve of renewable water supply per person in the world, just 5000 gallons per person per year, Kuwait has 75 and Malta 85. Means you can easily imagine this, those who are just a coastal civilization like Djibouti, they are also facing a renewable water supply. They cannot have a safe drinking water. The Kuwait and the Malta have been already facing this kind of problem. The Great Britain, the America has also a bigger problem of the water supply and what we see the bottle uh, crisis. Then the second point what they say the by 2025 World Bank predict, predicts that there will be 34 countries which have dropped below the 1000 M means 22,20,000 gallons benchmark. By this time, Djibouti will have slumped to just 70-60 gallons of the renewable water supply, Kuwait will be down to 40 watt. The case of Nil river and here the see how the dispute with uh, uh, on the water like the Nil river, dispute with the 9 North African countries like Egypt, Sudan, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Tanzania and the Jaira. Then probable conflict between Turkey, Iraq and Syria over Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Then the both Iraq and Syria dependent on the Euphrates for the survival, cutting the flow of river during Gulf War, the conflict over Zambezi river between Zambia, Zimbabwe and the South Africa, Mexico and America over Rio Grande. What we have been trying to understand, you see, just on the name of water, we, what we are understanding from the last, if you see whether it is the African continent, whether it is the American continent, whether it is the Middle East, whether it is the South Asia, whether it is the Southeast Asia. Everywhere what we have been seeing that every country are interdependent on the each others and if there will be a water crisis, it would affect to each and every country. It would take a bigger problem like see when there was a surgical strike, when there was a cross border terrorism issue between the India and Pakistan, the Modi government was thinking to cut the uh, 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 to snap the treaty of the Indus uh, treaty of the 1962 then uh, uh, the America and the UN was thinking about to cut the water supply of the Euphrates of the Iraq at the time of the Gulf War so uh, uh, right now the uh, the China is trying to divert the uh, uh, flow of the Brahmaputra so these are the issues are basically concerning the whole the community then uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, you have been seeing the Mekong and other, other countries. Then the threat to food security, the last point what we see the higher temperatures, salt seepage into the groundwater, increase in the floods and droughts, rot in the farming, disastrous consequence of the food security. What we are seeing if the sea level would rise, it would create more and more problem, the seepage, the groundwater seepage of the uh, sea water and it would create a larger problem for the agricultural land and th there would be less uh, productions of the agriculture and, and it would threaten to the uh, food security of the human civilization. Because see, if you s witness that, you see from the last 803 to uh, uh, 2018, the world population has been rising and rising. It would take 4 lakh years to reach a 1 billion population, but it took only 123 years to reach to 2, 2, 2, million, 2 billion and it would take only 33 years to reach 3 million and after that, after 14, 13, 12 and 11 years, the populations have been jumping to the one, adding the one more million and now there is a issue, you see, uh, 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 in 2050 or 2040, the world populations would be the 9 million and if the 9 and 10 million the world population would be the largest growth of the uh, world population in the developing countries and where there is a scarcity, a scarcity of the food, where there is a scarcity of the water, where there is a scarcity of the uh, other resources and if this present uh, weather uh, climatic change would take place, then there will be more scarcity. So, they are talking about, you see, if the present trend would be continue it would be a bigger problem for the world community. So, as long as the world community would not collectively think about it, the problem would not get sorted out and the human civilization would face a bigger and a much greater threat. So, in the coming week of the World Environment, Environment Day, we all have to think about how to reduce 
uh, and how uh, to use of refrigerators, air conditions and how to reverse uh, the, the uh, changing patterns of the uh, temperatures and how we will make the society more safer and more uh, uh, sustainable uh, for the future generations. That is the major concern for all of us. And on this issues, I am just ending this. Thank you. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us this session. Friends, if you wish to write to us, then uh, do contact us through what uh, email ID that is info.cc at nic.in. We are going to meet again very, very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again.